Hi. Quick disclaimer if you're watching this video, if you have feelings or eyes, you probably want to look away because you're about to see Big Ed naked. <laughs> oh, there it is. <sighs> I should have warned you, right? Well, I didn't because I didn't get warned either. I was watching 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After, with a question mark at the end because I question my decision sometimes. And all of a sudden, this frog-like looking man with his ding dong comes out. I've always wondered what Liz saw in him. Now I see what she sees and I don't get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was more than I needed to see that day. Today we're taking a look at Big Ed and his Big Ed, and apparently the never-ending saga of two people who seem to be in love, but also are the most toxic couple that I think I've ever seen on the show. Big Ed and Liz. They just can't seem to put it together, but they can't seem to get away from each other either. What a saga. Uh, by the way, my name's Leo. If you haven't subscribed yet, then I cost you with Big Ed naked picture all your life. So please subscribe. I'm actually just blackmailing you into doing so. While you're at it, do follow me at 16leo underscore on my Instagram if you want to give me ideas for the new series. After this, I don't know what I'm going to do, but it's not going to be looking at Big Ed. Where we left off with the couple is that uh, they were fighting. I'm not sure how they're going to fall back in love, but they're fighting to the point that they need couples counseling. And somewhere along the lines, this motherfucker gets naked. I don't really know when. I haven't watched it. I'm going into this blind and I wish I was going into this blind blind. But until that point, let's just watch the video. The fight after the engagement party was perhaps our biggest fight ever. Going to bed that night was like, okay, I think this is like it. I, I'm pretty sure that you said it was over. I'm happy to leave. And you were doing your crying and I thought it was over and now it's back to normal. It's amazing what a good sleep will do after a fight. That's why you say you never go to bed angry at someone. Because in the morning you might be just like, I'm hungry and maybe a little horny. So I think we were in a broken relationship. Like we've been slowly building. How does... How how does it fit on his neck? The... How does it fit? I don't, I don't mean to be rude, but he doesn't have a neck, so like, does it just slide off? I just want to know. Sorry, I'm sorry. If anybody knows, can you tell me? But before we start, I'd like to take a minute to thank HelloFresh, today's sponsor. I don't know about you, but I love to cook. Granted, I'm no Michelin star chef, and trying new recipes can be a little daunting for me. Although I'm pretty good. So don't you hate it when a recipe calls for like an obscure ingredient that you know you'll never use again and you have to buy like a kilo off it. That's where HelloFresh comes in. HelloFresh is an easy to use meal kit delivery service that boasts the use of fresh ingredients. Every HelloFresh recipe includes ripe, just picked produce that travels from the farm to your door in less than a week. They send you the exact amount of each ingredient needed for the recipes so you can rest assured knowing you won't be wasting extra ingredients. With options for every diet like vegetarians, pescatarians, pesty, or even just fit meals. It's really easy to stick to your dietary goals while enjoying a delicious meal. And most meals can be made in 30 minutes or less. How great is that? Use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use my code P-O-G-L-E-O-N-O-V-70 for 70% off, plus free shipping on your first box. Once you click, my description will live update to count the purchases. Thank you, HelloFresh. Thank you. You know, frustration on both ends. The fight I do see what I mean. It's barely like, I think it's just going to slide off and it's going to be like a road hazard. Or maybe it'll just, and he'll be like, where am I going? Maybe that's why he drives a Vespa because it's slow enough. Does he have like Velcro under the chin? I don't, okay. All right. You know, at the end of the day, through all of this, we both decided that we wanted to work on our relationship. Oh, for fuck's sake. I Woo! Great. I mean, you know, the fans hate it, but your therapist loves it because she's getting money. <laughs> she probably loves this, man. It's probably a therapist who's like, Big Ed, Big Ed, no, no, no. You got to work at it, man. No, no, I think, I think it's over. No, no, no. There's something there. I can see it. I can sense these things. Ed has insecurities and he's very jealous. Yeah, no sh**. I know that I don't want to give up on him just yet. Why? What? what does he provide you? You even said his dick was small. You actually, like everybody watches, his daughter watches the show and she's like, oh, my dad has small dick. I didn't want to know that, but now I do. Norma, his mom, knows this. Rich, his best friend, who probably already knew this, knows this. You're airing dirty laundry on TV and then saying you still want to work it out. And I just cannot figure out what you like about this man. The reason why I didn't leave is because... Here it is. I do love Ed. Why? I know that everyone deserves love, but not everyone deserves love. You know what I mean? There's some tragic people in humanity, they don't deserve love. And there's some people I just have debtors with, they don't deserve love. I choose to wake up and appreciate our memories, and I know Ed is worthy. You're willing to do everything? He accused you of being a lesbian on your engagement wedding thing, man. What does he have? He's a self-promotional asshole. He has, a, he has his face tattooed on his 
calf muscle, something I've never seen before. His body is shaped like a piece of coal that Santa would give you if you were a bad person this year. He's double your age and half your size, mate. What do you like about this? I am, I'm so sorry. I'm just being so mean today. Big Ed, I think he's, he's charismatic. Maybe that's what she likes. It's charismatic and maybe his d is not that small. It's just, it's just that Liz thinks it is. I don't know. That's just the look of a happy, beautiful couple. I'm sorry. All that stuff about you wanting to be a lesbian, that was just my insecurities and my trust issues. Yeah. Yeah, it was. But I don't believe in any way, shape, or form that you want to be with a woman or whatever. I don't... Yeah, because she's with you, man. Of course, if she wanted to be with a woman, do you think she'd pick this ugly ass? You're not a pretty woman. You're not Julia Roberts. I'll tell you, if Julia Roberts looked like this, they would they would really put her in a lot of movies, but not the same ones. They'd, they'd put her in some other movies to scare some kids into doing their chores and stuff. That was just me just acting dumb. It's the fact that, that I thought that something was being hid from me and I didn't like it. Yeah, maybe ask the questions first and not in an accuse, in a, uh, accusatory, ac accusatory tone. I mean, I think that would save a lot of time and effort in the relationship. And, you know, if Liz g gets a little more patient and is like, okay, I know this man tends to jump to conclusions. I'm gonna let that one slide. Every now, once and again, if you guys do that, I think you'll be fine. No, honestly, you'll have uh, like a hundred more problems. But like, I think that problem will be fine. I was wrong as I always jumped to conclusions. You have something beautiful and someone's going to take it away. So you need to sort that shit out before you get into a relationship. Because if you bring this into a relationship, how is the other person going to fix it? What are you doing, man? If you sort that shit out and you're just good, you're okay. And then you enter the relationship and you're like, damn, she's hot. All right, well, I'm going to do my thing. She might be with some friends. I'm not going to think about where she is. Great. Not only don't you worry and get gray hairs, but you're a very, very grounded person at that point. You're not an insecure person. Saying you're insecure and not fixing it doesn't actually help the issue. You're just throwing your problems on your partner at this point. I didn't have the best last relationship and I was accused so much and it turned out to be him. Usually the person who accuses you is the one doing it. So like if you're like, babe, are you cheating on me? It's because that person probably is cheating and is like, what? You're doing it too? I've watched Cheetahs. It's a horrible show. I don't understand the psychology of it that much. I'm not too well versed in it, but I don't think Big Ed is a cheater either. He's just very insecure. That's all. I want to marry you, but I don't want to be a divorcee again. And you don't either. No. Oh yeah, they both got divorced like a hundred times. They're like two times Ross. First marriage, wife's hidden sexuality. Not my fault. Even though our relationship, it seems like it's always on edge. We always end up coming back together. I mean, it's fine. Honestly, it's fine to come back together. I know people are like, it's toxic. I think it's a lot to do with social media. Like you see a lot of these statuses and stuff and it's like, if he messes up once, I'm gonna leave. Otherwise I'll lose my self-respect. I don't think that's, I think that's bullshit personally. I think that you definitely should fight and it's gonna be tough. However, you still need to know when the limit is there and like what you're able to put up with. There's a fine line between and these two are towing the line right now. I don't know if they're good for each other or not, but the fact that they remain together despite everything. On one hand, it's bad. On the other hand, it's like they both mutually want this. Are they codependent? Potentially. I, I have no idea. I've never seen two people of this age be codependent before. It's an interesting thing to look at. And I'm not one to give up, but I do see Ed as someone easily to give up. I just always think that she's the one who will leave the relationship. But it, it just shocks me that she's always like, Oh, Big Ed might leave. He might leave. The love of my life might walk out that door and try and put his fat ass to it. It's amazing how he's the one leaving. So it seems like they've sort of rekindled their relationship in a way. Guess Big Ed is accepting responsibility for his actions. So that's good. But now they're going to go to couples therapy because they so, so desperately need it. I had therapy that following Friday and I just said, I'm going to therapy. You're welcome to join. I told you. Didn't I tell you the therapist is breaking that shit in? This is like a strip club for this therapist. He's, as soon as he comes in, she knows that she's getting tipped. Big time. Big time. This is her whale. And that's a gambling term. This is her whale. What do you want to give each other credit for that you did well? She got up at 5.15 this morning and went and worked out for an hour and a half while I slept in. Nice. She got up at 5.15 because I said, Baby, your stomach ain't flat. It's fat. And I slept in and ate Cheetos and then did farts all day. So learning to give her space. 
space, yeah. right? We're recognizing what are our partner's triggers. Look, I, bag on it, by the way. It's not too late to go to therapy. It never really is. And it's good to talk about your problems. It's really good to be vulnerable and open. And you might actually discover some things that you never did. Therapy is probably something that's almost a necessity, I feel like, in this day and age. And I know that it was definitely seen as weak for, uh, first of all, people to go to therapy. Then I know for a fact men to go to therapy. And also on a personal level, uh, this is just from my experience, and I'm sure most brown people can relate. If you're from a type of household like this, that has certain values, you're seen as a weak human for actually having feelings or going to therapy. So it wasn't easy. But I think it's a very good thing to do. I think it's a necessity. And I wish, I really wish that uh, governments and people prioritize mental health as much as they did physical health. Because in certain places, physical health care is free. However, mental health care isn't. And I really think that's just as important, if not more so. So I wish that we made therapy free. Leo for president. Vote for me. Given the relationship that Ed and I are in together, it's very clear that we need professional help. I like how he read that like a dinner menu. <laughs> he gave him a pamphlet. He's like, y'all have the healthy relationship. Can I have that one? So in regard to security, what are your core beliefs? Well, it goes back to my last relationship. One day we just fought and he got off my phone line and then I got stuck with a $3,000 payment. Like, I'm sorry, did he call from Antarctica? What the hell? $3,000 payment? That's, oh, I feel like that's even worse than being cheated on. Leaving someone with that much of a phone bill, ugh. Sending my daughter to live with her dad sleeping in my car. So security for you represents that I can support myself without anybody else's help. You know what? I've been through that. I extend my sympathy. I mean, I've, I've been through that. I've been through that car phase. Just living there, not knowing if you're ever going to get back on your feet. It's tough. It's very tough, isn't it? Um, so sometimes you have to thank your lucky stars and just be happy and grateful for the day. It's very often to take that for granted in this rat race of a world that we live in because we're constantly fed bullshit and other bullshit whenever we go on our phones or even look out at the world. But every day you're above ground is a good day, isn't it? Leo for uh, public speaking. Man, I just go to schools and make everyone saddle. I had no idea. The fact that you lived in your car just breaks my heart. Bitch, you called her a lesbian like yesterday. It didn't break your heart. If she was in a car with another woman, you'd be like, you lesbian in a car? He's like completely angry and then not angry at the same time. Also, you drive a Vespa. I know that sleeping in your car is bad, but having a Vespa is like marginally worse. I worked six days a week, 10 hour shifts to 12 hour shifts. I have changed as a person to be there for him. So I guess Liz wants to go back to working full time at the restaurant, which is where she first met Big Ed. I don't know if you guys remember at the start of the saga. By the way, if you want to see literally the start, I have a playlist called 16 Leo vs Big Ed if you want to check it out. He met her as she was working as a waitress there. And now she's the manager, so she's climbed her way up. What represents security to you? To feel unconditional love. Do you think sometimes that you put pressure on Liz to give you love unconditionally? Just say yes. At times, I think I do. When she's asking to want to work, does it feel like a condition of your relationship? I mean, it, that's a really tough position, isn't it? Because she shouldn't feel like she needs to babysit him in the fact that she's going to be out late or like she needs to make him feel comfortable, especially when she's walking. Granted, if she was going out late every night and partying, it would probably be a different situation and maybe something that they need to talk about. If that's her lifestyle, it's different. But if she's just doing work, if she's doing the thing that she needs to do or feeling that security that she needs to then better the relationship, have at it, right? I want Liz to have her own life and it saddens me that, that I'm coming off as controlling. I, yeah, I think there's that fine line between controlling and wanting to be loved. I mean, you definitely, I think anybody that's a human wants to have as much time with that person as possible. And I think it's a hard lesson to learn that that person isn't always going to be there. In fact, as much as you love to be loved, a lot of life is spent alone regardless. The idea that they'll be home waiting for you once they're done with their stuff. Sometimes the idea of love holds you until you can see that person again. So it's good and it's a necessity and it's something that we all have to deal with as we grow up. Letting the other person go and do their stuff and then come back to you. Definitely works. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I'm <laughs> They're not our parents. They're not our dogs. Yeah. My main reservations are working late shifts, um, co-workers wanting to go out and party. Yeah, shut up, man. It's at the end of a hard week. Maybe they want to, okay? Maybe if she liked you enough, your big baby, maybe she'd actually invite you and be like, Ed, come out with us. Why don't you partay, baby? I'm sure, like, if you have a partner and they're like, yeah, man, we're going out with the work crew, invite them over. It shouldn't be that much of an issue. It's the environment. Now, why are we re-inviting outside pressure. She needs to have an, an, a separate life. 
so that she can love you fully. So I don't know if Big Ed truly gets it, but what the therapist is saying that in order for her to have her full capacity of love, she needs to actually feel fulfilled in other ways that are beyond the relationship. And I think that happens to uh, a lot of people. Like there's a, there's a lot of different attachment styles. And I think that Liz needs her space in order to give the love back. It's not that she's not caring. It's that Big Ed is too much reliant on her in order for him to feel a certain type of way. And so he needs to learn to do things and to grasp onto things and to be okay with his own life so that she could be okay with hers and then when they both meet great it is a hard thing to do this this should be happening at a way younger stage by the way it's very odd that it's happening in his like mid to late 50s and he hasn't figured it out but hey it's never too late to change right speaking of change this man has changed his clothes from on to off you're gonna see this man naked for a few seconds just prepare so let me just start you off by saying that they've wanted to reinvigorate their relationship. They're doing something spicy, something beautiful to get their relationship feeling a little more zesty and amazing. So they decide to do a couple's massage on each other in, on television. Oh, they're happy. TLC told them to be happy again. She's holding his fat tummy and yeah, woo, great, good stuff. Hello. Bye. Hello. <laughs> they're having a spa day and they they're getting a little rowdy with each other. This this is, you know, a little physical intimacy never hurt anybody, especially couples who are um, up and down. That might really bring them together. Good stuff. We're gonna massage each other and you know, hopefully end up, you know, it gets the engines a revving. <laughs> God, stop. I'm hearing like a 50 something year old be like, get the uh, engines revving, get the whole coal started, get the get the old locomotive choo -choo 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 in again, get the horses maneuvering. Oh, God. Ugh. Liz is a strong, independent, beautiful, wonderful woman. I've never felt like this for anybody. Except the last ones. Remember the last ones? Remember Rose? Remember, okay. Kaori. Remember those? God damn, he's putting his fupa on her head. Gee, <laughs> it looks sexy. Oh no. Oh yeah. Well, no, well. This is kind of how we normally are. These are moments where I realize how much I cherish him. So yeah, Liz gets rubbed down by evil Santa Claus and now she's like, I'm ready for you. And uh, he comes out bearing everything. All right, princess. <laughs> God and fucking oh, Jesus my. crackers. What the hell, elephant man? His body looks like it's frowning. Truth, Nacho Libre. Beneath the clothes, we find a man, and beneath the man, we find his nucleus. Have you seen a better body composition? Big Ed has the body of a Greek god that was cursed by another Greek god. That body looks like a dad who hasn't left the couch in 80 years. That neck looks like it was from that crash test dummy. I am so sorry to the people who actually filmed this and saw the uncensored version because they have pictures of Big Ed's... Big Ed. I actually get offended like when we go to bed and he's like has his shirt on or shorts or something. So you so you like this? You like you like that? Hey, I mean, if you that's what I mean. Love extends beyond physicality and conventional attraction. This might be, you know, the beauty standard and it's great. I'm sorry. I'm sure I'm, she has a lovely body. I mean, okay, it's, I wouldn't call it lovely, but he has an interesting one. And interesting is good. I can't believe that I just heard Liz say that she gets angry if he keeps his pants on, but we're learning things today. You're so sweet. Are you single? My fiance's taken, but I'm single. I see. <laughs> oh my god, this is just. <laughs> this is. Yo, that neck game is. They, someone should paint him. Someone really should paint him lying down. I think if Andy Warhol was still alive, he'd be very obsessed with this man. It's quite. He looks like a Coke bottle, but like not the, not the glass bottle, like the can. Oh yeah. <laughs> I am excited to inflict a little bit of pain to you. Jesus. Yeah, so um, Liz is going to inflict a little pain onto Big Ed by stripping him of his back hair. And TLC has inflicted a lot of pain onto everyone watching this by just showing this content. Did, did you think this is what you were going to see today? I'm sure you did if you clicked on the thumbnail. But were you disappointed? I'm sure you were. But you should be. Ow! That that's not, trust me, bro. That's not the hard part. I've I've done. If you're a guy, or you know what, if you have a lot of hair in any place and you've had a, 
Has it hurt? I feel like girls' tolerance for like getting the, like hair removed is way, way better than guys. Because it's not as frequent. And my goodness, I've had one of them. I've had the wax thing. I did it for a dare. Oof, that pain. Tell me one thing you want from me tonight. He said a blowjob. Oh! Oh my God, no <laughs> <laughs> that was the reaction. That was a very honest and true reaction right there. <laughs> she was trying to like get him like, you know, calm. That's what people do. Like when I had my nose pierced, the lady was like, Um, you know, have you, uh, do you have a favorite sports team? Oh yeah, the Chicago Bulls. She tried. It doesn't actually work, but I appreciate it. Ow! <laughs> oh my God, no. Holy She got a lot of, uh, I think, joy out of torturing me, which is... My back is so numb. Damn, bro, them back. This is... Jesus Christ. She did a hell of a job. There's a lot of hair still on there, though. <laughs> that was an evil laugh, too. The roots. Oh, the roots? How yes. do this? Because there's probably knots in it. That's not what the root is, you you filet mignon. The root is here, where, the, where it starts. Oh my god, you gotta start at the root. He starts like brushing the end like a dumbass. I think it's important that you definitely, before you walk down the aisle, that you know who you're marrying. Like everything about them. Yeah, and listen man, you should probably know who you're marrying. When the person says, do you take this man? And then she's like, ah, oh, Darren, Timothy. John? If she doesn't know who you are by that point in time, yeah, maybe maybe you should worry about that. But I'm glad that you guys are going to therapy. Maybe you could sort some of your shit out. And we still have a lot to learn about each other. Make no mistake, by the way, you are going to keep continuing to learn in a relationship. Marriage doesn't effectively end that relationship or mean that you know every single thing about your partner. It's not like some magical event that fixes anything in a relationship if it's already broken. You need to fix that in different ways. However, Big Ed and Liz going to therapy might actually unravel a lot of their issues because they both have deep-rooted issues that they need to fix. Big Ed sincerely needs to fix his insecurity and also be more independent. And Liz needs to be less angry and also more open and communicate better. It's that simple. So babe, I want to talk to you about possibly going back to my hometown in Arkansas. Damn, I like how he's pulling her hair really hard back and he's like, I'm going back to Arkansas. I'm hoping that you can come along with me. Okay, Big Ed, you got in a vulnerable position right now. Meet the rest of my family. I kind of want to make it up to you. What I'd like to do is see if my sister Christine would throw us an engagement party. He has a sister? Every time I watch the series, I learn more about him that I just didn't know. I didn't even know he had a brother to like halfway through my Big Ed videos. Now I learn he has a sister. I feel like I'm going to keep learning things. Like he has a twin brother called Bigger Ed or something like that. It's an opportunity to grow. Oh, I I met them briefly, but what are you are you what are you worried about? <laughs> My man <laughs> when she said the root, she didn't mean the root of her forehead, bro. What are you fing doing, man? He's taking the comb and literally start, he's starting on her cheek and going back. I don't really know what they think of us. I think you just need to understand it's gonna be me against everyone. Uh, so Big Ed is essentially saying that he wants to have a re-engagement party, but this time he does want people from his side there. Except he has to go to Arkansas now, and that's going to leave Liz without her friends or her people. Instead of having an engagement party in some mutual place where both parties could meet each other and they could both feel safe, Big Ed is now asking her to travel with him, which is quite daunting, especially when you don't necessarily know the family or you have an inclination that they don't much like you because of everything that's happened. It's a very scary position for Liz to be in, and also her hair is getting brushed by a guy who could barely brush her face, so... It does worry me that if someone has a bad opinion or is being negative, it can really get into his head. Yeah, so the other thing with Big Ed is that whenever his family or anybody else says anything about Liz, instead of being like, no, that's my girl, you're not going to talk to her like that. You're not going to say a thing about her like that. It's my relationship. Unless you respect it, I respectfully hope that you keep your opinions to yourself. He's like, okay. 
Yeah, she is. A, oh my god, you're right. Yeah, she's a bitch. I think in a lot of relationships, if you have a partner who takes advice from other people and can't formulate the opinions for themselves or distinguish the fact that at the end of the day, it's you and them, it's going to be a, an uphill battle. And I don't mean to say that you can't take advice from other people. I don't mean to say that other people talking to you isn't valid. I just think at the end of the day, you have to very much understand that other people only ever know one side. It's very seldom that you talk to someone and they get bored both sides of the story from both people. With knowing that, you have to understand that every piece of advice should be taken with a grain of salt. And at the end of the day, it is you and your partner in that relationship. So if you take advice from your friends who are like, drop that bitch, he's stupid, might not really work. I don't think we can survive something like that. You have nothing to worry about. You're gonna feel love. We're gonna have a great time. So that is the end of this episode. Big Ed basically proposes <laughs> an idea to Luz to actually go to Arkansas to meet his sister so they can re-engage and do that whole shindig again. That way, if she kisses someone or if she's with a girl, he'll be like, are you a lesbian with my sister? You show me on video. I like it. I don't know if he's going to say that. The point is that Big Ed is asking a lot from Liz and it's her decision. We don't know what's going to happen. And we know that she's being put in a position where she probably feels a little bit of pressure and expectation. Hopefully she goes. I don't know if she will. I'm not sure how many episodes are left in the series, but like I keep saying, I don't know if they're going to get married, but my money is on they will. What do you, what do you think? So I think they're going to marry each other and then hate each other because they just out of spite will never divorce. So I think they're going to have a very successful marriage because of how much they secretly hate each other. That's my theory. If you have a different one, please let me know down below. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Big Ed Watch. I hope to see you here again for the new one. And um, I know the series is almost coming to an end. I hope you're enjoying it so far and whatever's left to come. And um, there might be some new things down the pipeline. Not Big Ed related so much, but I do want to do a 90 Day Fiance on another couple that I will tell you soon. Thank you. Take care of yourselves. And uh, please don't let anybody brush your face before they brush your hair. That's just weird. Okay, bye.